So today we'll be talking on the topic food spoilage and preservation. So this topic will cover various types of food spoilage and the various methods that are available to preserve food. So food is defined as any material consisting essentially of proteins, carbohydrate and fats used in the body of an organism to sustain growth, repair and vital processes and to furnish energy. So as food contain various essential nutrients, they are prone to contamination by various microorganisms. So this contamination may be natural contamination or artificial contamination. So first we'll see the natural contamination. So natural contamination occurs when microorganisms attach themselves to foods. For instance, Fruits are often contaminated with yeast because yeast ferment the carbohydrates in fruits. The second one is the artificial contamination. So artificial contamination occurs when food is handled or processed such as when fecal bacteria enters food through the improper handling procedure. So now we'll come to the food spoilage. In food, several kinds of chemical changes occur once the food is harvested. So some changes may be considered desirable such as meat tenderizing, whereas others such as putrefaction, it renders food unfit for consumption. So the major classes of food chain include, the first one is the enzymatic processes. In this, the flesh of the animal undergo proteolysis by its own enzymes following its death. But plants after harvest undergo other type of change. For example, in harvested corn, the sugar it rapidly converts to starch. The second one is the chemical reaction with the environments. The most common abiotic chemical reaction involve oxidation by air. So for example, lipid auto-oxidation, it generates a rancid order. And the third one is the microbiological processes. So microbes, when they contaminate the food, it generates a wide range of chemical products. So this food spoilage, it refers to the microbial changes that render a product unfit or unpalatable for consumption. Most food stuff, it serve as a good media for the growth of many different microorganisms. So once the microorganism grows, they will produce changes in appearance, flavor, odor and other qualities of food. So this degradation process may be, the first one is putrefaction. So proteinaceous food, when it combines with the proteolytic microbes, it leads to the production of amino acid, amines, ammonia, and the hydrogen sulfide. The second one is fermentation. So carbohydrate-rich food, when it's contaminated by the carbohydrate fermenting microbes, it leads to the production of acid, alcohol, and gases. The third one is rancidity. So fatty foods, when it combines with the lipolytic microbes, they generate fatty acid and glycerol. So different foods, they spoiled in different ways depending on their nutrient content, microbial species, and the environmental factors such as temperature. So first we'll see the dairy products. Although this milk by fermentation, it leads to the production of yogurt, cheese, etc. 
However, under certain condition, bitter of flavor are produced because of the bacterial degradation of proteins. So, this protein degradation is commonly caused by the psychrophilic organism. So, these psychrophilic organisms are those that can grow at a very cold temperature, while cheese are less susceptible than milk to spoilage. And this is because of their solid structure and lower water activity. So, next we'll see the meat and poultry. Meat is easily contaminated with bacteria in the slaughterhouse from their heights, hooves, and intestinal content. Also, the muscle tissue of the meat has high water content as well as rich nutrients including glycogen, peptides, and amino acids. This supports the microbial growth. Therefore, the breakdown of these peptides and the amino acid produces the undesirable odorant which is an indication of spoilage. And meat also contains fats, but the lipids are largely unavailable to the microbial action. And this is because they consist of insoluble fats. And these meat lipids are commonly spoiled abiotically by auto-oxidation of unsaturated fatty acid, independent of the microbial activity. So now we'll see the seafoods. Fish, it spoils more rapidly than meat and poultry. This is because fish do not thermoregulate and they inhabit a relatively low temperature environments. And also, since they grow in low temperature environment, their surface microorganism, it tends to be more psychotrophic and thus they grow well under refrigeration. In addition, marine fish contain high level of osmoprotectant trimethylamine oxide in which bacteria reduce it to trimethylamine. So this trimethylamine is a volatile amine which is responsible for the fishy smell of the seafoods. Finally, the rapid microbial breakdown of proteins and the amino acid, it leads to the foul smelling amines and sulfur compounds such as hydrogen sulfide and dimethyl sulfide. So now we'll come to plant foods. Fruits, vegetables and grains, they spoil differently than the animal foods and this is because of their high carbohydrate content and their relatively low water content. And hence, because of the low water content of the plant foods, they have considerably longer shelf life than the animal-based food. Further, carbohydrate, it favors the microbial fermentation to acid or alcohol, and these limit the further decomposition and the microbial action can be managed to produce the fermented foods. So now we'll see the microbial flora of fresh foods. So the inner tissues of the healthy plants and animals, they are free of microorganisms. However, the surface of the raw vegetables and meats are contaminated by a number of microorganisms. Hence, it is desirable to maintain a very low microbial level of contamination on raw foods. So first, we'll see the meats. Among the most common bacteria that occur on fresh meat are the Pseudomonas, Staphylococci, Micrococci, Enterococci, and the coliforms. Now we'll come to poultry. Freshly dressed poultry, they have a bacterial flora on their surface that originates from the bacteria that were normally present on the live birds and that are contaminated during killing the feathering, etc. So under good sanitary conditions, the bacterial count has been reported to be from 100 to 1000 bacteria per square centimeter of the skin surface. So next, we'll see the fruits and the vegetables. So these fruits and vegetables are normally 
susceptible to infection by bacteria, fungi, and the viruses. In fruits, since their pH is acidic, which is ranging from 2.3 for lemons to 5 for bananas, it restricts the bacterial growth but does not retard the fungal growth. In case of vegetables, since their pH is slightly higher, which range from 5 to 7, they are more susceptible than fruits to be attacked by the bacteria. Now we'll come to the food preservation. So food preservation is nothing but it is the process of treating and handling food to stop or slow down the spoilage that is caused or accelerated by microorganisms. So preservation, it usually involves preventing the growth of bacteria, fungi and other microorganisms as well as retarding the oxidation of fats which causes rancidity. So we'll see the principles of food preservation. Principles of food preservation includes the first one is the prevention or delay of microbial decomposition and this can be achieved by keeping out microorganisms which we also call it as asepsis. Then by the removal of microorganism, then by hindering the growth and activity of the microorganism, for example, by low temperature, drying, anaerobic condition, or by the use of certain chemicals. And further, by killing the microorganism, this can be achieved by the use of heat or radiation. So the next is prevention or delay of self-decomposition of the food. And this can be achieved by destruction or inactivation of food enzymes and this can be achieved by blanching. Then by prevention or delay of chemical reaction and this is done by the use of antioxidant. So now we'll see the methods of food preservation. So the preservation of food can be achieved by the application of physical or chemical methods. Physical means of preservation includes the dehydration and freeze drying. As we all know that the removal of water, it prevents the microbial growth. So the water is removed either by the application of heat or by the freezing under vacuum which is known as fridge drying or lyophilization. So one of the disadvantage of drying is that some nutrients are broken down during this process. Next is refrigeration and freezing. So the refrigeration temperature which is usually between minus 2 degrees Celsius to 16 degrees Celsius, it slows the microbial growth. So this freezing also it halts the growth of most of the microbes but pre-existing contaminants often survive to grow again when the food is thawed. Next is controlled or modified atmosphere. So the food can also be packed or stored under vacuum with decreased oxygen or increased carbon dioxide. So the controlled atmosphere, it limits the abiotic oxidation as well as the microbial growth. So next is pasteurization. Pasteurization is usually carried out at 63 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes, then further followed by quick cooling to 4 degrees Celsius. So this pasteurization is effective in extending the shelf life of liquid foods. Next is canning. Canning is carried out for the long-term storage of food. For this, food is cooked under pressure to attain a temperature that is high enough to destroy the bacterial endospores. So canning is effective in eliminating the microbial contaminants. So one of the disadvantage of canning is that it incurs some loss of food value as well as the loss of desirable food texture and taste. Now we'll come to the ionizing radiation. Food irradiation, 
it effectively sterilizes many kinds of food for long-term storage. Irradiation also has proved highly effective at eliminating pathogens that would cause serious different kind of illness. So next we'll come to chemical methods of food preservation. So many kinds of chemicals are used to preserve food nowadays. The major classes of chemical preservatives include the first one is acid. Although by microbial fermentation, foods can be preserved by acidification, an alternative approach is to add acids directly to the food. So organic acids that are commonly used to preserve foods are the benzoic acid, sorbic acid and the propionic acid. So these acids are usually added to the food as the salt that is in the form of sodium benzoate, potassium sorbate and the sodium propionate. These acids they act by crossing the cell membrane in the protonated form thereby releasing their protons at a higher intracellular pH and it is for this reason they work best in foods that already have moderate acidity. So next we'll come to esters. So this esters of organic acid shows antimicrobial activity. One of the example is fatty acid esters and the benzoic acid esters. They are used to preserve processed cheese and the vegetables other organic compounds. So numerous organic compounds, for example, eugenol, which is isolated from cinnamon and cloves, it shows the very potent antimicrobial activity. Next, it's inorganic compounds. Salts such as phosphates, nitrates and sulfites are some of the inorganic food preservatives. These nitrites and the sulfites inhibit the aerobic respiration of bacteria and their effectiveness is enhanced at a very low pH. However, these substances may show harmful effects onto the human being because nitrites can be converted to toxic nitrosamine and sulfide can cause allergic reaction to some of the peoples. So now, I'll conclude today's discussion by stating that any chemical changes that render food unfit for consumption is termed as food spoilage. So this food is spoiled through the degradation of enzymes within the food or through the spontaneous chemical reaction and through microbial metabolism. And the food bond pathogens and these are spread during harvesting, processing and the share consumption of food. Hence. Food need to be preserved by the application of various methods to prevent from certain microbial contaminants.